is because only 1% of the women in this region have breast cancer. So it's not a big deal. Those are tiny numbers because that's a very small minority part of the population. These last two branches should be much larger numbers. So 0.99 times 0.06, we get 0 0.0594. 0 0.99 times 0.94, we get 0.9306. So potentially when I add up those four green numbers, it should add up to one. And thank God it does. So we know we're right and it's added up to one and we've not overthought our lives, but yes, it does change our answers from here on out. So we have to redo the rest. Okay, so it so said the probability that a woman selected at random, she has cancer, given her test had a positive result. So, it still should be the same concept. I want your help so that you're not crazy. <coughs> it's just different numbers. What's that line? Given. She has cancer given that she tested positive. And the numbers when you multiply out the first two branches, they're always going to equal to the number they came from. Uh, yeah, so you know, like each little tiny branch adds yeah. up to one, and then the tiny, the very end, the last four branches should add to one as well. Yes. So everything's supposed to be adding up to one, or else life is going poor, really poorly wrong. Okay, but when we put probability of cancer given that she has tested positive, what goes in the denominator? You can have a point if you know. Does it give her positive or does it give her both positives? Probability of positive. Which one can have the point. And so in the numerator, what are we looking for? Uh, probability of cancer uh, positive results. So it has to be both. It sure does. It needs to be the overlap of cancer and positive. You can have another point. Three. Still more points available if you can tell me the numbers from our tree to pull you into this situation. Well, the probability of cancer to have a positive, positive result, wouldn't that be um, no cancer live? Are you saying cancer and positive? Wait, yeah. be... uh, the probability that she, so we're needing cancer and positive. It has to be the very, very top level. So you would think so. So it's obviously 9-7. And we're obviously following all, all along that cancer branch. She tested positive, so it should be that point zero zero nine seven. That makes sense. One can have the point. I understand the 9 7, but what's the other one you want to add? Okay, so literally he saw the positive branch, the other positive branch, and he's adding those two numbers, and that would be correct. <coughs> and so I'm going to need that percentage, and you know he's not going to type it in, so you can definitely get the, get the point for that. Wait, what, what did you say cancer means in Boston terms? Positive branch. And the other positive branch. I just added the two positive branches. One point at a time. I got like 13. That's, that's probably about right. I got 14. Okay, cool. I got 0.14037. And I'm saying that's about 14%. Well, I could be close to 14. No, I got 14. Okay. Is everyone good on part B? <laughs> Yeah, you can have your point. I thought, I'm sorry, I thought that wasn't why. Sorry. Part C, probability that a woman selected at random does not have cancer, so no cancer, given that she showed a negative test. So seriously, we want to add up all the negatives, put them in the denominator, and in the numerator, we need the probability of cancer, I mean no cancer and negative. Their overlap. So if you'll give me that percentage, <coughs> stop stealing it. If you'll give me that percentage, I'll give you the point.
Okay. So you should have done no cancer and negative. So 0 0.9306 goes in the numerator. And the denominator, we still have that because that's still one of the negatives, but we have to add the other negative. But the other negative is such a small, small, tiny number that when you actually type this fraction in your calculator, you get 0 0.9967, which really makes you want to run it to 100%. It's probably smart of him to say that's 99%, or maybe you even want to say 99.7%. You don't want to straight up round to the 100. It's never a good idea. 100%. Yeah, it's never a good idea. I would 99.9 .9 it before I ever said straight up 100. That's why Grimmick says 99.99. Exactly, because if you say 100, then that one exception proves you all wrong. Back to when you say causation, you can't use that word unless you can prove it. So unless you can prove that it's 100%, it's best just say there's some sort of relationship or correlation. Do not say causation. Okay, the probability that the test is reliable. So seriously, we just want to multiply the, the true results. So you, you have cancer, and you, but you've tested positive times the probability of you don't have cancer, and you, cancer, you tested negative. And it also just happens to be the exact same things we just used. So we know for the cancer positive, we did 0.14037. We know for the cancer negative, it was 0.9967. We just need to multiply those things together. 13%. So it was 1399, so 0.14, so you're saying 14%. So, to be honest, I like my fudge numbers from yesterday a lot. It was a lot more reassuring to my heart than these. Because this to start seeing that the test is very reliable. That makes sense. It's a little that's terrifying. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's completely terrifying. It's a little too complicated yesterday. I'm trying to make it too complicated. Trying to say yesterday... The no cancer negative, we were trying to argue that we need to consider the, this as part of that 1% because if they, if their test was negative, we were trying to say that was part of the people who actually have cancer. Because if you tested, you were supposed to, they actually had, like some people on this no cancer branch, what if they actually have cancer? We, we, we went way too deep. I don't remember, but I was in it to win it. It made sense at the time. It's like you had to go home, sleep on it, wake up with nightmares about it, eventually get it right. Yes, dear. Why wouldn't you multiply the, the, um, the tree diagram, or whatever, the two true probabilities, the 0 0.9306 and the very top of it? Oh, so you're wanting to do just these two? Because those are just very common. Why wouldn't you multiply those? Um, that's not a bad idea. I just assumed the test is reliable. I was assuming that too. We had part B and part C. I just assumed part D meant U, B, and C multiply together. We know that actually makes sense. And that's just for questioning my whole dandy. Sure, how someone else out there on the internet has a key that isn't feeling insane. Oh, I came in and hooked up this yesterday. So, let's see. Has breast cancer. U, it says. Uh-huh. They didn't do that exact one. They didn't know, but they do have our tree. So I feel better about that. But no, I understand what he's saying. So let me explain what Louise is saying, because again, I was trying to make D B like that. Maybe D should really just be probably that the test is reliable. Well the test was a truth on this branch. In this branch, so wouldn't it make more sense to just multiply those two numbers? How can you just multiply the same thing? Like, yeah, it's, it's like 0 0.009. So that makes me even more concerned. Yeah, so it's less than 1%. So let's, let's, let's not do that. that. That's even more concerning. Again, back to I'm just assuming, and they're going to give me some credit for it, that since we did the NC, they were wanting to use the NC for the, you know, that's just not, you know what happens when you're assuming one. Okay, flip to the back. Uh-huh. Okay. 
Okay, so our last topic we want to talk about is what you're going to have a worksheet on when I get done rambling. And those who need to make up a task could do that then and just finish the worksheet at home. Um, there's this thing called independent, and there's another topic called mutually exclusive. So those are our last big topics. Um, two events are independent. If the concurrence of one event does not change the probability that the other event will happen. Um, and I like your example. If you toss a coin just because it landed on heads the first time, and you toss it again, it doesn't mean for sure it's going to land on heads again. You have no idea still. So they explain, like, probability of heads given you toss tails is just probability of heads. It, it, they don't actually affect each other. Um, they do have an overlap. So, <coughs> thank you, dear. Okay, so the very last thing here explains. So, like, if this is A and this is B, the probability of A times probability of B is just their overlap. So, two events are independent if and only if they, they only have this tiny overlap and one is not really influencing the other. So, independent, you would think nothing's influencing the other. Three is entitled point. Um, because three is on my nerves and my nuts. <laughs> they're doing anything. Okay. Okay. No, it, it was a pair. Wait, what are you talking about? Okay. One, like... are you trying to lose your points that you've worked so hard for? Um, I'm sorry. What was I saying? <laughs> this is why. Okay, two events are independent if and only if. So it's just their overlap that they share. For instance, we're going to do this next one. And we're going to see, we're going to test to see whether or not, um, Male and left-handedness are independent. Do you think male and left-handedness are independent? Yes. And I would think that too. But are males more likely to be left-handed than than females? Yes, they're most likely. Like, no. Yeah. No. Do you not know? Like I, my brother and my uncle are both left-handed, but we have women in the family, and none of us are left-handed. Well, see, my sister's left-handed. Well, that's why I my family. Yes, completely agree. But then looking at this table as well. There weren't that many men. Heck, they, they surveyed more women than men, yet they had more left-handed men than they did women. They should have surveyed an even amount. Yeah, but also could be some sort of bias. There should, could be some sort of bias. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, so we're going to see if they're independent. So we're going to test for independence. And we can test quite a few different ways, but it just says in three different ways. So... Um, you might, it might be more likely for you to be left-handed because you were a man, whereas you would pray those are two different things. Like, I'm a boy or girl, and I may or may not be left-handed or right-handed. But there might actually be, like, because you're left-handed, you're more likely to be a man than a woman. One argues, yes. I don't know if it's like that kind of a resistance. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Okay, so if we look back at the top, one of the ways we can show that they're independent is if we multiply them, so probability of male times probability of left-handedness, and we want to see whether or not that actually equals the probability of male and left-handed. So that's one thing we could test. And if these two are equal, then yes, they're independent. And if these two aren't equal, then no, they're not independent. So the probability of being a male. How many males are surveyed? 48. 40 what? Eight. That's a six. Oh, okay. So 46 out of the 100 total were male times the probability of left handed were, yes, you. Oh, like, oh, like, oh, okay. But this is the upside 10 out of the 100. I don't know. So where's? Was the upside down mean the X? It means and. Okay. Oh, Lord. Hard. It looks like an A, oh, it means and. The other one means or. What other one? Upside down. The upside down version. That looks like a U. The one that looks like a U means or. You gotta know the difference or you're never ever gonna get any probability problems right. Okay. Fine. It's fine. Okay, so there were 46 men. There were 10 left handed people. So if I multiply 46 times 10 over 100 times 100, I need to know the actual percentage. 
If someone first one gets it, it gets a point. You know it's gonna be Hunter and Louise if you don't hurry. Yes. Okay, so we're hoping these two things are equal, but we're not sure. So we actually need to consider probably a male and left-handed. So how many were male and they were left-handed out of the 100? Seven. Seven. So that means we're at seven percent. Do these two numbers match? No. no. So it's not looking good for that they're independent. So back to my theory of I think if you're a boy, um, I think boys are more likely to be left-handed than girls. But again, it said to justify in three different ways, and that was only one. So we can try it two more ways. Okay, so that was one option. Another option is what they were explaining at the top. Um, they said you could do like probability of left-handed given male. It needs to equal the probability of left-handed. Because you would say like, <coughs> it doesn't matter whether or not I'm a boy or a girl. The probability of me being left-handed should be the same regardless of whether I'm a boy or a girl. So that's why we think these two things should match. So the probability of left-handed we actually just dealt with. There were 10 left-handed people out of the whole 100 people survey. So it was a 10% thing. But left-handed given male, we know for sure they're male. How many males are there? There are 46 males. And left-handed given male, we need to know how many left-handed males there are. How many left-handed males are there? Seven. Okay, and I, you can tap it in your calculator and get the 0 0.15, but you probably realize this was not equal to that anyway. So our test failed again for independent. But they said I had to do it three times, so we can do it a third time. We try probability of left-handed given male. Let's try probability of male given left-handed. Let's do it in reverse. Is that the same as the probability of you being a male? Well, we know there were 46 men surveyed, so 46 out of 100 for that one. We know there were 10 left-handed people surveyed, and that seven of them were men. So 0.7 and 0.46, those don't match either. So we have justified our answers in three different ways. And in my mind, I thought maybe there was a fourth way. And so I just want to make buyers beware kind of thing. So I guess the important thing to note for my brain of things I need to know, if they ask you to test for independence, you need to know to show like probability of A given B equals probability of A and the reverse. And it also doesn't hurt to show that if you multiply the two probabilities, it's the same as the overlap. So knowing these three things are important if they ask you to test for independence, which they really might. It's not a bad idea. Um, but if you were like me, I was trying to not use formulas because I don't use my brain, I thought. And I decided I would just make a Venn diagram, and I was going to make it work. Okay. I do like those. So I thought M for male, L for left-handed. I knew there were seven that overlapped. But then, I mean, I'm the one making the Venn diagram, and I know what I need the number to add up to. So I knew to put a 3 here, plus 7 plus 3 is 10. I knew to put a 39 here, 39 plus 7 is 46. So this... Well, making a Venn diagram is great. It doesn't actually show independence the way the table didn't actually show independence. You have to test using formulas. Uh, so you really can't solve it like a tree? No. No, you're going to have to literally test. That's the bad part about testing for independence. Now, should you be smart enough to realize some things aren't independent in your brain? Like, for instance, um, our, our notes stop going into this, but... Um, for instance, if we have a deck of cards and the first card we draw is a spade, the probability of drawing a second spade, well, wasn't that influenced by that first spade? Were there 13 of that suit? And since we selected one of that suit, we messed with the probability from here on out, so those two things aren't independent. Meanwhile, if we had replaced the card in the suit and we had the original 52, and we again pulled for that second card to see if it was a spade, that would be independent. 
I don't know if that made sense. You're about to get to try your own activity. Are there any questions about independence? Then there is one more thing I would want to say. So independent, there's still an overlap between the two events. There's a, there is a term for something when there is no overlap, like the two events have nothing to do with each other whatsoever at all. <laughs> And they're called mutually exclusive on the worksheet I'm going to give you. They specifically call it disjoint. Mutually exclusive is the more common vocab term. Disjoint is acceptable. It really does. But literally it means um, mutually exclusive. They literally have nothing to do with each other. But the good news is, so while we do have to memorize the three different tests for independence, if your events are independent, they're not mutually exclusive. And if they're mutually exclusive, they're not independent. You cannot be both. You cannot say we have an overlap and we have no overlap. That makes literally no sense. So that's why there's a statement here that says, if two events are mutually exclusive, they are not independent. And if they are independent, they are not mutually exclusive. But I mean, thinking about the Venn diagrams, that makes sense. Like, independent, they still had an overlap. Mutually exclusive, they literally have nothing to do with each other. One, in no way whatsoever, influences the other. So yes, the other, sure. Yeah. So, independence means they're dependent on each other? Independence, as in, like, the male and left-handed. They might, well, it, it failed. It turned out more men are left-handed than women. But like with the male and left handed, if it had worked, like they actually do influence one another. Like they, they do go hand in so hand. They are independent? Well, they failed the test, apparently, for real. It does turn out more boys are left handed than girls. But does that mean if like two events are linked in some way, they are, they are independent? That's if two events are linked in some way, then you might want to do a test for independence. If two events are in no way linked whatsoever, then they're mutually exclusive and there's no need to test for it. What is independence? Um, the occurrence of one event does not change the probability of that the other event will happen. That's the head coin toss. Like heads and tails do go hand in hand, yes. But just because the first time I flip for heads doesn't mean the second time I'm going to flip for heads. It's still a 50 50 every time. How is that not mutually exclusive? Mutually exclusive, as in they have literally nothing to do with each other. Like yeah, he was saying, like shrimp and. Your eye color. Well, nothing. You can argue that they still have overlap like that. How would you have overlap with a different voice color? No, I'm talking about with the shrimp and the oh. left handed. Like, you can be left handed and like shrimp. I like, knew shrimp. that we were going to leave because I had these same questions, which is why we're about to do the next activity. Let me read the last sentence and then we'll do the thing. You'll be like, cool. Okay, I'm good. Um, okay, yes, dear. What section of the handbook are we supposed to be in? Well, this is the end of the note, so this is the end of the main, the end of the road. Okay, as agreed, I think I'm out Wednesday for a doctor's appointment, so we might literally push back multiple choice and free response for Wednesday, but as agreed, Monday and Tuesday, frappy, multiple choice stuff, Wednesday test. Okay, independence requires some overlap of circles in a Venn diagram, but just because circles overlap in a Venn diagram doesn't necessarily mean that the two events are independent. We must rely on calculations to aid us in determining if two events are independent. So back to, you got to test for independence. And did I actually have to keep doing this test after it failed once? No. But if it succeeded once, I probably want to test it out and make sure I'm not crazy. Okay, stop looking at that. Look at the other sheet of paper I gave you. Wait, quick question once again. Ask, yes, dear. So if they have overlap in the Venn diagram, they are independent? If they have overlap in the Venn diagram, we want to test for independence. If they have no overlap, they're mutually exclusive. You can't be mutually exclusive and independent. Independent, they're still going to have me correlated. It's just not that one causes the other. Back to that word. Which I mean, they're still correlated. Um, like, they still have an overlap. There's still an overlap between left-handed people and boys. Mutually exclusive, there is no overlap. None whatsoever. Like, back to if in, in my theoretical world that I live in, you are a boy or you are a girl. You can't, well, and that's just when I get politically and I guess which is why we get to this worksheet, which deals with numbers that I can, I can. Oh, I like the worksheet was answers for all our questions. Yes, it will.
So if we look at number one, for instance, it says, number one says C. C is single digit numbers less than five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then it says D, single digit numbers greater than five. So is that going to be disjoint, which is the same thing as usually exclusive, or is that independent, or is that, or are we going to put no for both? Yes. Yes. Mutually exclusive, disjoint, use synonymous, like yes. That's how we created the So, yeah, because the other one's one, two, three, four, five, and the other one's every number after that, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. However, excluding one, two, three, four. It depends on the five. But my key, single digit numbers less than five, single digit numbers greater than five, since neither of them address the equal to. So technically my key says it's disjoint. So number one should be disjoint, not independent. So yes or no. Alright, alright, alright. We can keep going and do this. Do you wanna do you wanna do this at home, Alex? Do you wanna take your test now? Sure. Okay. Jerry, do you wanna finish your thing too? You can always take the test at home. I can just start the you can if you'd like to. I don't know. Okay, number two says what? Brain. Uh A and B. Even single digit numbers and odd single digit numbers. Okay, so those are. Seems I'm pretty disjoint to me. Agree. You can't be even and odd. Unless you're zero. Then you're neither. And then you're neither. So, and then in case you forgot what single digit numbers refers to, they just put that in the top right corner. Oh, well. What is the number that is? Yes, sir. Literally, my key says yes, no. I'm so sorry. Uh, it can't be both. Cannot be both. So you can write, you can. You can write yes, no, you can write no, yes, you can write no, no, but you can't write yes, yes. But how can it be neither? Mm -hmm. Oh, if they're like completely dependent. Well, let's look at C and uh, let's look at number three. What does number three say? Disjoint because it's multiples of three and not three itself. Yeah. Single digit numbers less than five, which includes the number three. Multiples of three that are single digit numbers. Three is a multiple of three. Is it? I don't like that. I mean, three I mean, times I mean, one is three. I mean, so it can't be ten. Are they independent? Yes. <laughs> you said that they have overlap. I think they're the same Independent. So if we actually did our test. Did you actually test it? It's probably completely made up the same way as me. Yeah. I don't have any numbers. Okay, we got you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. So you got ten total. And then C is single digit numbers less than five. So zero, one, two, three, four. So you have five. So it's a five out of ten for that. Are we still on three or no? We're still on three. Okay. And your key says no, no. My key says no, no, no. Is a, is a wow. decimal a single digit? <laughs> is a decimal a single digit? No. They only did zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I know, but so those are integers. But would you yes. call a decimal single digit? Generally, digit to me implies integer. To me, Generally, digit implies integer because when I think digit, I think stuff like give me the digit girl, like zero zero. <laughs> okay, so you're mad at number three because three is a multiple of three. Yeah, I want that. Three times one. I mean, it makes sense. Three times one. It also three is a multiple of three. So also the probability three, of three times C times the probability of E. Is that equal to the probability of the overlap of C and E? I mean, also with that logic, pretty much that would work for any number. There's multiple of 84, and if you multiply 84 times 0, it's still 0. It's multiple of 84. That's true. Logic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, so we're going
multiples of three that are single digits. I yeah. thought three, six, nine. He's arguing zero, three, six, nine. So I thought it was three out of ten. So I got 15 out of 100, so 15%. And I need to see whether or not it matches the probability of C and D. So C and E, single digit number is less than five. And you need to be a multiple of three that are single digit numbers. Which is two out of ten. Because you had three. Well, if you're counting those two, and then you had 20 here, and then you still had two out of 10, which is 20%. <coughs> but you know good and well, that's not what my key did. Yeah, your key was wrong. What? You know what my key did, because it makes more sense. It, it, for me and the common folks, it makes sense that zero is not counting. So they said three, six, nine. They said there were three multiples of three. And then they said that it was just three, so it was one out of 10. So they said 15 over 100. Is not equal to 10 over 100, so that's why they said it failed the test for independence. This is an outrage. Okay, if you I can cruise, I don't overthink everything, and I still agree with Luis on this one. As long as, and I'm not going to be mad at you on your paper, again, back to as long as when you put independent, you show it, it tested for independent, that's fine. I think the solution to this is that three is not a multiple of three. And that oh my six gosh, and Luis. Nine and both are, but three is not. No, okay. If, and if, no, what I'm saying is if you're going with the, the argument that yeah. 3 times 0 makes 0 multiple 3, then 3 times 1 is a multiple 3 as well. Well, yeah, exactly. But then, then that one, then it has to be one. If you're going to say that 3 times 1 is a multiple 3, it has to be one. Google says 369 12. Google's also freaking math. Where the hell's dot com? Okay. <laughs> it's a dot com. I need you to find a more reliable website. 369 12. 369 12. Study Academy. No, 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 no. I'm still on. I'm going. It's zero. I'm going to freaking email it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Give me a little bit of time. But you missed the whole point. As you always do, you overthink your whole entire life. As long as you show me that it tested for independence. and show that you tested for independence. They're going to have on that rubric for weirdo outliers like you. Um, GMATClubforum.com says that zero is a multiple of every number except for zero. So you can't write zero by itself. I'm just kidding. And I had this I'm exact issue when we did this. Uh, in fact, we had this exact same debate at our thingy. But you know what? If you really want to think of the fact that you're just yes or no, and if you put yes for independence, just prove it. As I long as you prove it, I'll give it to you. Words. 